We are here at the third annual JT Elite Camp in Rockland, California. How is the camp going this week? How are things? How are the kids? How is this whole entire atmosphere out here in Rockland? Oh, it's been great. Um, you know, it's the uh, third annual and just the kids and just the type of, um, you know, the feel that the parents have been giving me, just saying that they their kids are enjoying it. It's getting better each year. Um, that's what it means the most. You know, it's, some guys just do the camp, you know, just for the heck of it. I think for me, I do it so the kids are happy. They're having a good time. And, and I just see some getting better and, and getting taller and, uh, and, and the games are getting better. Yeah, that's one of the cool things about doing a camp consecutive. You know, every year you come back, you start seeing the same kids come back, and all of a sudden they're they're bigger and bigger and bigger. And you're a guy who grew how how big in in high school and college? You grew like a huge amount during your your formative years, right? Yeah, I was five eleven uh, my freshman year, and I I got finished my senior year at six eight, um, and then was six eight, and then finished my year in college at six eleven. So had a lot of uh, gro growing to do. All right, so you're uh, the all-time leader in games played for the Sacramento Kings. You're still in Sacramento. Why is it that you feel so important for you to sort of dedicate your time and your energy to the youth of Sacramento, doing camps uh, with your JT Foundation, all of these other things that you do? I just think it's important just to give back uh, regardless. Um, you know, I you know, know a lot of people. Um, you know, I've been made a lot of relationships with just certain people in the Sacramento community. Um, it's great to see, you know, the new arena getting getting uh, getting built, and um, the city. It's going to be great for the city, great for the fans, and, and they uh, they deserve it. So, um, you know, I just think for me, it's just you know, giving back is you know the most important thing, especially to a city where you know I have seven going on eight years um, with. And I was just saying, I mean, that's kind of equivalent to being a freshman in, in high school, uh, which I was 5'11", and then a senior in college when I was 6'11", so it's about a, uh, it's a foot and about 50 pounds of a difference. So that all in one in one organization uh, tells you a lot, but it doesn't even tell you the half of the novel I could write uh, of what I've experienced in, uh, in seven years. Well, you're still here, and I know the one thing that I noticed at the end of the season uh, is that you were, uh, you were a bit beat up, and I think your your teammates were beat up too. Three coaches one year. Things were going crazy. Uh, things are still going crazy. But you seem like a lot of the weight's been lifted. Uh, is it just nice to get away from the game and kind of get that, that break? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think over the years, um, you know, in levels that I played at, I've, I've won everywhere I went. And, you know, when you become a lottery pick, you know, you're going to go to a team that, that hasn't won. Um, and then just with the stuff that, you know, we all have gone through as an organization, um, that doesn't really strive for winning either. Um, it's not an excuse, but also it's just not the, the blueprint of winning, um, you know, and having that every off season, let, let alone, you know, not knowing if, the, if we were going to be here and being interviewed in this NBA city. Uh, so now since that's out the way and now you keep having still drama um, in off season, it, it doesn't help the situation. But. You know, I just think that, uh, you know, we just kind of just got to keep playing the course and, and know that uh, there's better better things to come. Vlade Divac is a new head man in Sacramento. Have you spent time with Vlade? What are your impressions of him, you know, the time that you've been around him? Well, I spent some time with him, especially when he first got here. Um, also talked to him, you know, after the season and, and throughout the season as well. Um, you know, you definitely, you know, the, the city and organization definitely obviously has a lot of uh, – you know, confidence that he's going to make things, uh, you know, you know, better for the city and and well and well deserved. So, uh, you know, we're just all as players, you know, just seeing how things go, um, you know, and, and like I clichély say all the time, you know, you only can control what you can control. Uh, so, you know, we handle what we got to do, and we'll let uh, you know the, the the big guys up at top uh, handle that as well. All right, so I, I was thinking about this the other day. You came into the league, and it was Shock and Haas. It was you and Spencer Haas. Uh, and then that same year that you came in the league, uh, also Dante Green came to the team. Um, you got three guys who have had three completely different experiences. You've been in the same spot for all this time. Spencer Haas is now, what, on his fifth team, sixth team? Dante's not in the league anymore. How wild is it to think about that, how there are so many paths that, that can happen in the NBA and how your path, while it hasn't been stable, it has been stable. You've got to, you know, have one place. You know where, you know, the Chipotle is in your neighborhood. Uh -huh. And, you know, you know where to go and what to do. And you've been in Sacramento. 
Uh, you know, like you said, it's, the situations have not been the easiest. Uh, that's kind of proof in the pudding of what you said. Um, you know, it's you know, but the NBA is a business, so you know, I feel like regardless of our situations, and uh, we're all blessed in our own type of way. So, you know, like you said, it hasn't been stable. Uh, you know, this with with any of the guys that you that you named. Um, you know, but situations could always be worse. So, you know, guys are still being successful. Guys are still trying to be productive. Um, you know, and, and and you know, stay either in this league or or, or, or become you know the best pro that they can be. Uh, so, uh, you know, you always just want to wish the best for for everybody. And um, you know, we all keep in touch with each with each other as well too. When you look at this free agency and it's just gone nuts, I mean, guys are making crazy, crazy dollar amounts that, I mean, no one would have expected the new TV deals coming up. How wild is it to see all this happening around you and be part of that world? Well, it's exciting, I can say the least. Um, you know, I think that winning all in uh, the right situation always helps you um, to, to strive, you know, for greatness and, and make sure that you're uh, good for, for years to come. So. As a fellow, um, you know, NBA player, I feel like, you know, happy to see guys, you know, be successful and being able to take care of themselves and their families. Um, that's what it's all about, you know, as a, as a player, um, you know, on the court and off the court. So it's exciting. Um, and especially, you know, for guys that are, are going to, you know, look for contracts for years to go. And with the TV deal, uh, it's going to be even more exciting, too. So um, I think you're going to see a lot of guys. Uh, with a liar, a lot of fire um, in their eyes, especially to start the season, especially with these contracts going. Because you know, if you're in the right situation and, and you're playing well, uh, you get big money. So that's that's definitely the uh, the route everyone wants to go. All right, so I just want to finish up. Let's talk about your camp for one more sec. I know that you've brought in a lot of kids. Uh, they're busing in Amador. Bus Lines is bringing these kids in. They've comped that. You've spent a lot of your own money making sure that kids who don't have a lot of money can come to camps like this. What is it that this camp means to you going forward? And like, how how special is it that this is still going so strong for you? Well, I think just for me, it's just I just want to see kids succeed. I think the most important thing is, um, you know, if you have a kid that maybe was here when they were six and, you know, maybe 10 years from now, you know, they see us and they're like, you know, I first started dribbling the ball at your camp and now I'm, you know, head, headed to college on a basketball scholarship. Those are the things that, that mean the most. Um, so for me, it's not a thing where I want to collect money and, um, you know, make sure I can, uh, you know, just provide for myself. You know, I have that, my foundation, all the proceeds, you know, go to that, um, you know, an American Heart Association. Um, and then just also, um, you know, just making sure that, you know, the kids are doing well. That's that's the most important thing, um, making sure they're doing well on the court and uh, off the court as well. All right, and that's Mr. 514. Is that what we're calling you? 517? Well, I think it's 519 plus. It's 519 plus. All right, all right. So uh, good luck this season. Hopefully we'll see you back in Sacramento. Appreciate you.